Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I'm gonna be discussing five ways that I've learned to help me manage my stress and test anxiety. My name is Connor and I'm a second year dental student at Roseman University's College of Dental Medicine. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content and follow me on Instagram so that you don't miss out on what I'm up to on a day-to-day -day basis. We just had our first test since coming back from winter break, and it's the most stressed I've been for an exam since the start of last semester, probably our first or second class then. So I don't know if it's coming back from a break and getting back into the groove of school, or if it was just the classes that we started the semesters with, but having faced or dealt with my test anxiety and stress levels being really high just this week, I wanted to make this video addressing how I've learned to deal with test anxiety and stress. Tests are something that have stressed me out since my undergrad. And thankfully I've learned these things that I'll share with you to help me cope with that. Some of you probably have exams or midterms coming up and I hope that you find these tips useful in coping with your stress or test anxiety as your exams continue to get closer. The first thing that I want to talk about is something called anxiety reappraisal. And this is something that I actually learned about in one of my classes during my undergrad. The idea behind anxiety reappraisal is you're basically rewiring how your brain thinks about your body's stress response. We all know about the typical fight or flight response that our body has in response to stress or anxiety. We all experience stress a little bit differently, but I'm sure you can all relate to stomach twisting into knots, sweaty palms, jaw clenching, problem sleeping, and more. And these are all natural responses to stress. And the idea with anxiety reappraisal is rather than trying to get your body to relax when experiencing these signs and symptoms, you're changing how you're telling your brain to think about these signs and symptoms. So you are telling your body rather than I'm stressed, I'm nervous, I'm worried, that you're excited. And I know that this sounds really simple and probably stupid even, but for me, it has been the single biggest thing that has helped me in dealing with my test anxiety and my stress in school. Every time I'm getting ready for an exam and I start having those feelings and worries of, oh no, I'm gonna forget everything, I'm not gonna pass this test, and it's just gonna go horribly, I start telling myself, okay, I've studied hard, and I'm excited for this exam so that I can show the things that I've learned. And by doing this, this has really helped ease my levels of anxiety and stress in my schooling. If you've heard of anxiety reappraisal, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Or if you haven't and you're gonna give it a try, let me know down below what your experience is like with anxiety reappraisal. The second thing I wanna talk about is getting enough sleep. Sleep is often the first thing that gets sacrificed for school, work, friends, or family. And lack of sleep for some reason is something that we brag about. We wear like a badge of honor and talk about how little sleep we often get. But when we're lacking sleep, we're more irritable, our decision-making decreases, our memory isn't as good, and we just function on a lower level. And so sleep is something that I really try to make sure that I'm getting enough of. I'm an old man. I'm 28, almost 29. 
and I like to go to bed at 9 or 9.30 when I can. That's not to say that I'm perfect and that I get 8 to 10 hours every night. For my first couple of videos, I was up until 1 a.m. filming and editing and trying to figure out how to do this YouTube thing. But to help me sleep, I take a strawberry gummy melatonin that is delicious and it helps my body to relax and my mind stop racing so that I have an easier time falling asleep. And I do this usually an hour or two before I'm wanting to go to bed. The third thing that I've learned helps me manage my stress is maintaining key relationships. I know that it's hard right now with COVID to physically spend time with those people that are important to us, but maintaining these relationships is something that can really help improve our mood. I know that this is something that I can improve in, especially if it's the week of an exam. I'm absolutely terrible at giving my family the time that they need and deserve, but it is something that really helps me stay relaxed and keep my stress levels at a minimum. Uh, I make sure to eat dinner with my family and to help get my kids ready for bed every night because I know that that time is important for them and it's also important to me. I know that I'm already missing out on time with them just being in dental school and with all of the work and studying that is involved with it. So having that time with them is really important to me. Another important thing about maintaining these relationships is it's just nice to know that you have someone in your corner that cares about you, that wants to share in your successes and in your failures. And sometimes you just need to vent about a bad day or a hard moment. Just try not to focus too much on the failures or the hard moments because nobody wants to be around someone who complains all the time. The fourth thing that has helped me to deal with stress and test anxiety is exercise. I've got a set of adjustable dumbbells as well as a weight bench so that I can go out in our garage and lift weights three times a week. And I should say try to lift three times a week because uh, you can't maintain a dad bod lifted more than uh, three times a week. Whatever it is that gets you moving, schedule time for it each week and do your best to make it happen. The fifth and final thing that I wanna talk about are hobbies. Hobbies are something that seem to be forgotten by students, especially when you have kids. But make time for doing the things that you love to do. Draw, read a book, watch movies, play video games, start a YouTube channel. Which brings me to today's video sponsor, no one. You don't have a video sponsor when only 20 people are watching your videos. But in all seriousness, don't be afraid to take breaks. That time can be just as important as the time that you spend studying and it can help provide you with a new set of eyes or a fresh perspective. I know often when I'm struggling to figure something out or understand something, that I will spend time with my family, that I'll try and learn something about filming or editing on YouTube, or I will go to sleep. And often when I come back from doing any of those things, I often will have a much easier time in whatever I was struggling with before. It just seems to click. I have an easier time figuring it out and understanding it. So I know that it can be somewhat scary to take breaks, especially if you have an exam coming up and you feel like you're crunched for study time, but don't be afraid of those breaks. So there you have it. Five things that have helped me to manage my test anxiety and stress during my time as a student. I hope that you found something helpful and that will be beneficial in managing your anxiety or stress and go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future content. Share this video with a friend if they're constantly stressed or if they're interested in dentistry. And follow me over on Instagram so that you can see what I'm up to on a daily basis. Thanks, we'll see you in the next video.